there, it's Leanne Phillipson, registered nutritionist. And today is Cook Together, and for us it's our self-isolation day 14 in the midst of all the, um, the COVID-19 experience. So welcome, welcome. Today, our last day of uh, self-isolation, I'm down a fair bit of ingredients, um, and so today's recipe while when you actually have a look at the recipe today the way that i'm going to make this is actually probably a lot more like what you've got going on in your kitchen so uh, this is called immune boosting soup from my book uh sprout right family food i don't have a, f a photo actually from in the book so the recipe is on page 297 so the ingredients are found in an earlier post, depending on where you're looking um, at this. If you're watching it on YouTube, then you'll find it, uh, find the recipe just below. So broth is such an important thing to have on hand to either drink, to add to soups, to add to risotto like I made, uh, I think it was last night. So it's such a useful food to have on hand. I always have jars of it frozen in my freezer. And actually for today's recipe, I wanted to show you a really fast way if you say, I, I just wanna make this recipe, but I don't actually have any broth or stock and you maybe don't have any Tetra packs. I do love making this from scratch because it is so, so easy. So sitting here in front of me, I have um, a chicken leg and thigh, which is attached. So this is the L-shaped one. I always make my meat broth as a specific recipe in my book, especially for when you're starting your baby on solids. This really has to be followed very specifically the way that I suggest it, because it's not a normal way to make your broth or stock. So what I've done, and this is more the way that I suggest that you make a meat broth, is if you've got some chicken legs, some chicken thighs, even if you've got chicken breasts, but um, to make the actual meat broth, there's a specific way of making this and a super, super fast way to make any kind of broth that you, that you, you know, you just wanna make some chicken noodle soup. That's something that I've brought my girls up on having when they don't feel great. So it's something that they don't mind mind having it's along with like egg and uh, boiled egg and soldiers then um, then it's kind of like the go-to type of um, type of foods when you're just not feeling great because a lot of the times you don't really want to eat but you know that you want to maybe give your kids or yourself some foods um, that are nourishing for them that you know they're getting a lot of nutrition from but they just don't feel like it at that time so I did have two of these. These came in a pack of two. Um, in my recipe, I recommend that you use maybe four of these, but the best way to do this is just fill up your largest pot, which I've got over back here, with water, and then take these and throw them in. So I've already put one into this pot. I did have some stock, which I took out of the freezer, and I've put in here, and then I'm actually adding in um, adding in just one, just more because I want to show you and I want to have some chicken left over and ready, um, or I want some chicken so that I can show you what's going on. So this has been in for about five minutes or so, so it's kind of lovely boiled chicken. Not what you would love to have, but you can see the skin's on, the, the bones are in, and this is dark meat chicken. And the reason why, I'm just going to turn that up a little bit more. The reason why I'm using dark meat is because it has more iron in it than the chicken breast. You can use a whole chicken if you want to, but I just buy the chicken legs or thighs and that's what I use um, That's what I use for this. So I'm gonna chop the vegetables while this is still doing its thing and then I'll kind of give you an idea of, um, of how it's gonna, gonna end up. Now in my, in my book, I recommend using soba noodles, which are uh, made of buckwheat. They come from, uh, it's a gluten-free, it's not even really a grain, it's a cousin of rhubarb, but anyway. But you can put in whatever noodles you want. I actually have some noodles left over from the rainbow rice wraps from a few days ago and another cooking together recipe. Uh, you can use anything. Here, I've got these. Very crinkly to show you. You can use some a squiggly foozly. You can use some normal pasta that's nice and colorful, or you can 
even use your, uh, your rice noodles. So the way that I tend to suggest that you do this, yes, you can absolutely, I'll just put this off to the side. You can absolutely make this and then put all the noodles in and then just leave it. But what I have found over time is that the noodles keep on, except for the spaghetti, the noodles keep on absorbing all the liquid and then the fusilli gets really, really, really um, huge and that's not so great. Um, and the Thai, uh, the, the Thai kitchen, those rice noodles, they just disintegrated. So when you're offering this, then I have a little container separate with the noodles in and then I just kind of throw in little handfuls of it and they almost like instantly warm up. So the base of this is the broth or stock, whatever you wanna call it, I'll keep calling it broth just because in my head that works. And um, so to that, I'm going to add in some onion. I'm gonna actually go in and I'm gonna, I'm gonna chop the onion and hopefully I'm, I'm not gonna cry. I'm gonna get rid of that half way off just because uh, the last time I did this, I did end up with my eyes uh, streaming. So hopefully I'm not gonna use the super heavy end of it. Um, but onions and garlic are incredible for our immunity. They give off what's called sulfur-containing amino acids, which I don't expect you to, to remember. This onion's not looking so great in that area. So my normal chop is not gonna be the same today just because I've got a little bit of a skew if onion that wasn't looking so good. So let's just chop this guy up. So I do put onion in this. It's actually the way that you make a, any kind of broth is actually this similar kind of recipe that I suggest for um, for making this, or goes my eyes, um, for making this recipe. So you tend to make a broth by putting in some carrots, some onion, and some celery, um, and maybe some garlic, and it's kind of the same. So I'm gonna chop this up and then I'm gonna get rid of it into the pot. Um, and it's gonna go nice and soft. Chop it up fairly small. Um, not everybody loves a big mouthful of, of, of onion. Like, like I said in other videos, um, just because I tend to teach parents how to cook for their kids, everything that I make is pretty small. Whoa, I really forgot how strong. Uh, have you ever found organic onions to be stronger? than conventional onions, if you've ever done that difference, because, whoa, they do get really, ah, yeah, eyeballs. Okay, so check on my chicken. He's still looking quite good. So I'm gonna show you afterwards, I'm gonna take that, um, take that out and then just kind of like pull it apart, a little bit like pulled pork. Let me throw this into a bowl so I don't lose it all on the way there. And then I'm gonna chop up the carrot and the celery. And then also we're gonna put some mushrooms in this because mushrooms, as I talked about in the, um, in the video yesterday, are absolutely incredible for your immune system and they also contain um, vitamin D. You need a lot of mushrooms to really get up to a point where, um, where you're getting a lot of vitamin D. You need like a bowl full of them, so that's not really gonna happen unless you really love, love, love mushrooms. So um, you can scrub your carrots. I'm just gonna peel them um, today because it's nice and fast for me to do. Um, but you can scrub them if you want. And we're gonna do the celery too. I've lost my tech expert, Logan. She's been eating her blueberries behind getting brain freeze. It would be funny if we also had uh, the front and back cameras going on so you guys can see what's going on behind the camera but I do have a special surprise for you because it's uh, um I'll just show you fast um Hadley we recorded a video and she made our protein muffins earlier so uh once I've edited that and put some outtakes in it because her blender pancakes um recipe and video was really funny and this one uh she said actually part way through mom you're gonna edit that out right and I said Hmm, sure, but no way. Just wait till you see it. It's hilarious. Anyway, these are her muffins and they came out beautifully. And uh, so it, that's kind of in an attempt to get your kids into the kitchen as well and making something. So hopefully if they're seeing another kid make, you know, make something, then your, then your kids might say, yeah, she can do it. And um, have happen what did happen to her 
and she carried on, then yeah, man, I can totally do that. So look out for that uh, video coming up. Um, you'll find it on YouTube, and I'll post it to uh, post it to social media um, as well. So, do I have any questions from any everybody? I haven't even asked you guys how you're doing today. How are you here in Toronto? The sun is actually shining, so what a treat for uh, what a treat for us because uh, there have been a few pretty blah days, which doesn't really help when it comes time to, uh, you know, having to stay inside uh, where we are. We get to see over the lake, so it's lovely. Today I actually saw a sailboat out there, for anybody who doesn't know. I do thoroughly enjoy sailing um, and do it as often as I can, and there was one lone sailboat just going by um, on the... Uh, across the water so it was lovely lovely to see that uh going on today somebody out there being brave and seriously having on a lot of layers because it's still a little bit chilly it's getting warmer but it's it's still a little bit chilly so with that said sorry just onion nose and eyes running so that typically is what happens when we start to get a little bit sick isn't it your, your eyes get a little bit watery and your nose starts to run so um in homeopathy, like cures like, and there is a homeopathic rem remedy which you can take for when that when that starts. If you're into homeopathy or you're not, maybe that's just a a top uh, a top tip for you. Um, uh, if you want to look into that, then go right ahead. I'm not a homeopath, but I sure do use a lot of homeopathy. So the color of our carrots, which I'm putting in here, contain beta carotene. And beta carotene is, you know, people say, oh yeah, carrots help you see in the dark. Well, they don't exactly do that, but the reason behind it is because the beta carotene is a very powerful antioxidant. It turns in your body from beta carotene to vitamin A. There are some people that don't have the ability to change it from beta carotene into vitamin A, so they need to take vitamin A um, specifically, but vitamin A is actually super, super, super important for the mucosal membranes, which sounds like a big waffly word, but basically what that means is for your lungs, for anywhere, for your internal skin is what mucosal membranes are, So, which include your lungs, inside your nose, um, so vitamin A is super important. So the beta carotene that you can have in anything that's orange or red or yellow is really important. So always into your soups, into anything that you're making, try and throw in some of this fantastic color. I've got some celery, which not everybody loves having. Sometimes they do. But just score all the way down your celery. Make it fairly narrow. And then... This is absolutely the fastest way that I know how to, and I'm no chef, so I've just taught myself to chop pretty fast after doing, I don't know, about 10 years of cooking cooking classes to thousands and thousands and thousands of parents that came through all of my cooking classes. So yeah, you gotta learn to make pretty swift work of this, especially when you've got small children around or maybe you're doing this at, um, at nighttime. So if you've got any questions, pop it in down below if you've got any comments do the same so i'm just going to get these guys going take the chicken out and then at the end i'm going to throw in the the mushrooms because they don't really need quite as long to cook if I, we weren't, weren't in the situation that we're in right now then i would have shiitake mushrooms i would have maybe a few different mushrooms that i would be able to add and the beautiful thing that i talk about in my um in my book for this recipe is actually adding something called kombu seaweed. Now, what is that all about? Well, it's actually a dried piece of seaweed and for anyone who's um, vegan or vegetarian and you don't wanna do what I'm doing with the chicken, then you can actually take a piece of this dried uh, kombu seaweed, it's also called kelp, and then you put it in the water and it rehydrates. Now, sea vegetables are some of the most nutritious on the planet, you need to know that. Um, so all that nori and, and all of those, you know, little packages of seaweed, they're actually really, really good depending on what they've got, how much salt and everything they've got on top of them in addition to they're already kind of salty. But you can make a stock or a broth with that and it imparts so many nutrients into the water so that you're, again, amping up the nutrients that are in 
uh, that's in the stock or the broth, whatever it is that you're making. So I'm going to take this out. I'm going to turn this down now just because it's been going pretty, pretty hard. But that's just because I wanted to show you what was going on. So this piece of chicken, I'm going to let it cool down before I do anything with it. This piece of chicken um, has also imparted some, um, it hasn't really been in there for long enough. I do suggest about two hours really of boiling it. Um, if you're making the the actual meat broth but again i'm showing you for the for this purpose so this is given off some fat which is really really important for helping the gut the lining of the gut to be really quite strong and also um, it's given some nutrients with the knuckles and all of those bits it's also offering some collagen which is important for gut healing and then also um, there's a lot of um, gelatin and then the fat actually helps to transport nutrients. So into this, I'm going to pop in the vegetables. We just do want those to be fairly, um, fairly soft. I'll let that cook a little bit more. While that's cooling down, I'll quickly sort out the, uh, the mushrooms while I'm doing that. Yes, Logan, you've got a question? Uh, no, Lisa Thornberry Aww. is here and she said a little hard eyes emoji. Hello there, Lisa. How are you doing and your lovely family? Thanks so much for, um, for saying hi, popping on and saying hi. So, mushrooms. Chop these guys up. They're really super fast. I might as well reuse my bowl. Pop those in there. They really don't need very long, um, very long to cook, but they give a lovely, lovely flavor. Another thing that you can add to this are any dried mushrooms. And when you make uh, rehydrate dried mushrooms, then again, you end up with kind of like a stock broth kind of thing with the water. Don't ditch it. Use that and add this, add it to this because it's just so delicious and just really gives such a rich flavor. So between the chicken that can go into this and the stock and the kombu that can go into this, and the mushrooms that can go into this, then you end up with a super, super rich, uh, rich tasting broth. Because chicken noodle soup, you can of course buy it, you can get the packages of it, you can do all those kind of things, but honestly, this is really not difficult to do, and I'm probably making it longer because I'm showing you how to do it. But really, you know, it'll probably take about 20 minutes or so um, to do. So I'm gonna go back to my chicken. I'm gonna get a couple of uh, a couple of forks. So you can ditch the skin at this point. If you were making a stock stock and you were you know kind of taking this out because you needed to eat it for for part of your your meal. Yeah, it's it's almost cooked all the way through. So this is the chicken that I'm gonna throw back in to make the chicken noodle part of the soup. So it's um, it's kind of multi-purpose. So not only am I using it for um, for giving some nutrients, then also it's gonna it's just gonna go right in right into the soup. So you can just go through the whole thing. It's super hot, and I've done this before, so I know how burnt my fingers get. So you just want to pull it apart so that you have those kind of strands of chicken um, a little bit, which is really really lovely in the um, in the soup, so that it doesn't get overwhelming. Um, I remember making this for a friend's daughter when she was recovering from, I think it was hand, foot, and mouth. Oh my God, she adored the broth. I took it over there and um, and she just inhaled the broth, but kept spitting out the chicken. She was like, nope, not having that texture. I don't feel like it at all, but just keep on giving me the the, the vegetables. She was, uh, she loved, she also loved the, um, the I guess it was the flavor and the fat. They love the fat. So because I've boiled this and this ends up with a lot of fat on the top of the surface, I don't take it off. Leave it there. The fat is what really, really helps to heal that gut. If you need more information and think, oh my God, you're absolutely, you're an absolute lunatic because there's no way that I'm gonna have all that fat. You know what, when you have a craving for something or you're like, oh, I feel like something, or I'm a little bit hungry but I don't really know, very often it's you're actually craving fat. And if you think about what have you eaten lately or maybe you're going more for chips than you are for chocolate or anything like that, very often a lot of our cravings are actually for fat. I'm gonna do a better job of this once it cools down because like I said, I know when, I know how hot it is, I burnt my fingers many times trying to do this really quickly. To try and make, uh, to try and make this. 
So when I took this over to um, to my friends and her daughter, who's um, about a year and a half, was inhaling inhaling all of it. She just wanted the broth, and that was totally fine. So just on the side of a really messy doll, but this is the kind of chicken that then I would just throw right back in again. So um, you can save the bones for another time. You might get a little bit more out of those, but. Um, using something like this to actually make a really quick broth means that then you have that chicken to use and just to throw back in again. So it just makes it a little bit more, a uh, little bit more efficient. So this is kind of back to the boil again. I throw in my mushrooms. That's going to be super tasty. And the last thing I want to talk to you about, because I'm not going to get this all completely finished um, in the end, is adding in some garlic and adding in some ginger. Garlic is so important for us right now. So I'm gonna put in about three, uh, three cloves, they're not huge, huge ones. Um, but because this is going to be boiled, then you don't have to worry about it being absolutely minuscule. So just chop it up the best you can. Use a garlic press if you want. If you've got nothing else except the jar hanging around, then that's totally fine too. That's all good, so that's gonna go in. And then the other thing is, might as well put that in now, is some ginger. So I've got a little piece here. I showed this in another video, but just in case you haven't seen it, sorry, it's starting to get a little bit dark now, the sun's gone behind uh, somewhere. So I'm gonna just gonna see if I can try and get as much light on this as possible. I'm using the edge of a spoon to almost just pull off the skin of the ginger. You can use a peeler just like I did with the um, with carrot, but this anti-inflammatory uh, ginger, which is so soothing and calming, um, it's just, sometimes I just chuck some of this into, um, into a mug with some honey, with some lemon. Um, if I'm really not feeling great, then I'll put in some garlic. Yes, I do actually take some garlic and I put that into a mug. I call that the garlic bomb. And, um, and it, it's so incredible. It really does tend to halt whatever is going on, whatever scratchy nose or throat or anything like that that you've got going on. Yes, Logan. Uh, Crystal is here and she's having a little hard eyes. Hello, Crystal. How are you, my love? Okay, so I'm going along and basically for the ginger, you want to make kind of like little matchstick type pieces. Again, this is going to be boiled essentially. So it's not going to be too overwhelming if someone gets this in their mouth and they are um, not a ginger lover. So a lot of the heat that you would get in, in a raw ginger is just going to kind of come out. So I'm not too, too worried about that, but it's a little, a little finicky to get them into these little sort of match match sticks, but you know, it's totally worth it because it's still just cooking cooking away there. You can chop it as small as you want. It really depends on your family members. So I just kind of go at it like this, get it as small as I can. And if they don't like it, they'll just spit it out. So Logan's raising her eyebrows behind the, uh, behind the scenes going, yeah, mom, sometimes I do that. Or do you? No. No. So you know why? Because it's good for you? No. No, she doesn't even notice because like I said, it's really not that super strong by that by that time. So I'm just gonna go through and give it another quick chop. So all this is kind of in progress. Um, and part of cooking together might be that you have other family members in the kitchen or part of cook together is that you and I are in the kitchen together and you don't want anyone else in there because you actually want a little bit of time to yourself, maybe with a little glass of, um, of a, a vino while you're doing while you're doing this um, so there we go this is looking really great let me see what I have to give it a stir we've been doing a lot of cooking today so we've lost a lot of our wooden spoons and things okay let me bring that over to show you see if I can do this okay so that's it can you see that can you see that about Logan mm-hmm yeah so I'm gonna throw back in the chicken that I've pulled apart, knowing that I'm gonna have, I'm gonna, I will cook this one after as well. I'm gonna throw that back in there. And then I'm gonna, I would cook the noodles separately, and then I would add those in after the fact, just so you understand all of that. Yes, Logan. 
Uh, Crystal said yes with three exclamation marks and a wine emoji. <laughs> yes. Crystal is a lot of fun to cook with. Uh, whether it's a martini or it's some wine, then yes. And it's also lovely to cook with your friends. I know we can't do that right now, but hey, you know what? Pull up someone on a Zoom call and say, let's, I saw Leanne make this, let's do this together. Cause you know, that's what we gotta do right now in these times with our social distancing. Okay, so the last thing while that, really all that's happening now is those vegetables are softening and those vegetables are, are cooking. Um, I'll add a bit more chicken in and then the very last thing after the noodles go in or actually probably a bit before Then I, I suggest that you add in some miso you think God, really? I don't even have that either. Don't worry about it. If you don't have it Don't worry, but miso soup is actually incredibly nourishing. It's a fermented food So it's got some good bacteria for your belly for your gut um, going on in there and the nutrients that are in here are so incredible, especially for if you're recovering from something. So whatever virus you might have, whatever cold you might have, whatever sickness you might have, or if you just really, the stress is just getting to you, you're not eating very much, that tends to be the way that I go. I don't tend to eat when I'm stressed, whereas some people just head to the fridge and they have their snack a -thon going on. Um, and having just some miso soup, you can put a, a teaspoon of this into a mug of warm, like boiled and slightly cooled water. You don't want to put this into anything and then boil it because it will kill off a lot of the nutrients and also some of the um, some of the good bacteria, mostly the good bacteria. So this you actually just add on serving. I tend to take a little bit of the broth. Um, I'll put in a teaspoon of this. I'll mix, 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 and then I'll chuck it back in again a little bit like if you've ever done anything with cornstarch to try and thicken something. I tend to do that um, with the miso. There's a bunch of different misos out there. I am no expert on miso. Um, this one is a little more grainy for some reason. There's a whole bunch of other ones. If you happen to have a little package of it, you can throw that in. It's not quite the same as this in terms of... Um, active bacteria that, that's in this fermented product, but still, you've got some nutrients going in, and this absolutely replaces any salt that you might think about putting uh, putting on into your, into your soup. So I really don't tend to salt this until the very end uh, because I tend to rely on the miso. So that would be the last thing that you're going to add into your, um, into your soup. And then, hey presto, uh, you've got some immune supportive, um, I try not to say immune boosting, um, I think it was on episode 11 of Eat This With Leanne on my podcast of my fabulous colleague, um, a doctor that looks after myself and uh, my kids, Dr. David uh, uh, Davis Brockenshire, he said, you know, we don't really boost the immune system because the immune system's chugging along every day, it's doing what uh, what it's supposed to and sometimes yes it'll take a little bit of a dip when we're super stressed or we're not eating well we're having too much sugar but really to just say here eat this and super boost that doesn't always kind of like you know whoop, get a big spike in your immune system so we want to keep on eating these kind of foods all the time so that the immune army is ready to go my podcast that just came out episode 14 is all about immunity it's going to sound quite different to episode 11 because my new recording studio is in my closet between my shoes and my jeans and my dresses are just up there um so the sound quality is different but we're still recording the podcast because it's so important for us to keep on having this discussion whether you're watching this video kind of as as soon as i filmed it or you're watching this much later on know that if you've got some interest in keeping your immune system really really super strong and um and just just on a really really even um on an even keel then your food really does have an impact your vitamin uh, intake really has an impact so make sure you keep up that vitamin d that vitamin c going in yes logan uh crystal said tonification is key aha excellent word tonification of the immune system so let's keep it chugging 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 along in my um in my podcast episode i talk about the immune army we do have and i go break everything down also in my book there's a whole chapter on allergy and the immune system and i and i kind of geek out just a little bit i get a bit sciencey in this one talking about the lymphocytes the natural killer cells the macrophages um, the mast cells, all of those guys, and I think it's kind of cool to know a little bit more about it. So there is a chapter on that in here, and also I break that down 
in the uh, in the in the latest podcast as well. So I'm just gonna pop a little bit of the soup into a bowl. I might as well just keep on using this one, just so you get a bit of a, a bit of an idea of how it looks. Oh, it always makes me feel good when I pour this soup because. It just feels good in a bowl like that. And then, like I said, any noodles that you happen to have, you just throw them in at this point. It's super hot, so it's gonna warm them up really, really, really quick. So, I hope that helps. Yes, Logan? Uh, Lisa Thornberry said, my allergies are the worst right now. I really need to read that. Ah, yes. So for your allergies, Lisa, then you definitely need to get um, something um, to help ease that histamine. So those mast cells I talked about, they are just going bonkers right now. Um, and it's actually, uh, we, I talk about this, um, have a listen to the, to the podcast, to episode 14 that just came out, uh, I guess, is it Monday today? I don't even know what day it is. Yes, Monday, mm -hmm. just give it today. Eat this with Leanne, search for that. And I really explain that. And Chris, my technical producer, he's awesome at asking those questions that I may not think of because, you know, it's kind of like, what do they call it? Like the curse of, curse of the genius, or I don't know, when you know a whole bunch of stuff already. So he said, well, what do you mean? Those mast cells are doing what they're supposed to. So when I have itchy eyes and, and, and my nose and, and all of that stuff, is that kind of normal? Well, it is kind of normal because that's what your mast cells do, but man, it does not feel good. So up, up, up your vitamin C, Lisa. So important, vitamin C as well as um, immune tonifying, as Crystal said, then it also, hang on a second, I've got my alka C. Here, this is my uh, Take This with Leanne alka C. So this is one of the strongest antihistamine nutrients, and I want everybody to be taking this right now um, three times a day, at least a thousand milligrams, three times a day. If you find that you're getting a bit of a bubbly belly, um, you're up at what's called bowel tolerance. Lisa, you would probably even be able to take maybe a little bit more with like 4,000, but you go up and you go down with vitamin C. So know that at least 2,000 a day is quite average and a really, really good level to take. Sometimes I've taken 4,000. I remember years ago when I was super sick, I was getting tonsillitis and everything was going crazy. I took 10,000 um, in one I think it was in one day and probably about six hours and then nothing going on in my belly. So we get up to a point of what's called bowel tolerance. So the alka C is absolutely tremendous for that with extra minerals like um, selenium important for the immune system, zinc important for the immune system. So, and because it's in a powder, you can take a little bit more, you can take a little bit less depending on the day. Yes, Logan. Um, Sarah Oakley said, yes. hi, a fellow South Beecher. Uh, where's the best place to buy good quality miso? Mmm, good quality miso. I think from a health food store, I tend to, because uh, you're um, in the hood, I tend to head up to Bloor West. There's a couple of places up there. There's a really, a Foods for Life, it's called. The Sweet Potato is my favorite um, place to go and kind of do my big shops. You'll definitely find this. It is always kept in the fridge, so don't go looking in the other, in the aisles. You have to head towards uh, towards some sort of chiller cabinet to get this. So when you add this, um, when you're adding this in, it's coming out of the fridge. All right, great question though. Um, a little bit more of a specific or a specialty type product of, of something like that. You can also get it, I think, in some sort of block sometimes. Um, different places do different things, but that's where I, where I head to get mine. All right, any other questions, Logan? I hope that's helpful for you, um, for you, Lisa. Do check out, um, do check out that chapter in my book too. Yes, Logan. Uh, Sarah Oakley said thanks. Anytime, Sarah, and uh, feel free to ask me any other questions. Um, just send me a, a personal message, a DM, or pop the question underneath because those kind of questions are really awesome for other people to have a look at and say, oh yeah, now I know where to go. Not if you're not in the Lower West area of Toronto, but you'll get the idea of where you're going too. So I'm going to go and finish off cooking this lovely batch of of soup. A lot of this is actually going to go back into my jars and into my freezer. These, I just have to show you these jars. This is where my stock came from, so I'm going to wash these, but I love these ones. How many times have I broken a normal mason-sized jar because I've overfilled it and then the whole thing cracks? 
can't tell you how many times I've done that, so I've ditched those. And these, because it tends to take the stock or broth or even soup out really quickly when I run the back um, or just all the outside under hot water, then eventually it just all slides out into the saucepan and then I warm it up that way. So, um, so these are the best. I think I just got these from Canadian Tire. Um, nothing fancy, but I do wish I'd bought more because I've broken a few. Yes, Logan. Uh, Lisa Thornberry said, thanks for this. Going to check out your podcast. Take care, XO. Thank you. Lovely to see you, Lisa, and love to your beautiful, uh, beautiful kids. Okay, so um, tomorrow, day 15, we are in, um, we're free. <laughs> Not that that really means anything. I don't think we can do anything uh, different to what we've done today. We can, um, I can go, um, go, go and get my own groceries rather than relying on other people who've been so generous with their time and getting the foods that we need. So, um, so thank you to everybody that has taken care of us while we've been in self-isolation. And we really made sure that we, that we stuck to that for both our safety and for everyone else's after traveling. So I wish you and all of your family a beautiful evening. And uh, once I do another recap on what I've got in my fridge, maybe tomorrow I'll do something like some granola. We'll change it up from dinners and things like soup. And uh, what else have we done, Logan? We've done salmon cakes, we've salmon burgers. We've done quesadillas, we've wraps. done wraps. We've done- Blueberry crumble. Oh yes, apple crumble. That was um, what Hadley wanted to have for dinner one night, which was uh, which was awesome. Um, so many of them. So just search for the hashtag cook together if you want to head over to Sprout Rights YouTube uh, channel, then you'll see a whole bunch of them there. And once I finish editing Hadley's fantastic muffins, then you'll have a really good giggle with that, with that one that's coming up too, soon too. So take good care. Head over to SproutRight.com if you want any more info about the um, about the supplements and especially the Alka C for those allergy sufferers and everybody that just wants to um, really support your immune system at this crazy time worrying about catching the uh, COVID-19. All right, take care. Have a great night.